Greetings, Joe Lum here, aka JCP1977. It's Sunday and it's another album rankings episode. This week I'll be covering the British American rock band Foreigner. Foreigner was formed in New York City in 1976 by Mick Jones, Lou Graham, Dennis Elliott, Al Greenwood, Ed Gagliardi, and multi instrumentalist Ian McDonald the last of whom was a founding member of King Crimson. Foreigner is one of the world's best-selling bands of all time, with worldwide sales up to 80 million units, including 37.5 million in the United States. Jones came up with the band's name as he, Elliot, and McDonald were British, while Graham, Greenwood, and Gagliardi were American, meaning the last half of the band would be foreigners no matter what country they're in. They will release nine studio albums and go through a, a whole slew of lineup changes throughout the years. Mick Jones remains the only founding member of the band. Ian McDonald had passed away many years ago. And there will be subsequent reunions between some of the band members in due time. When you're done watching this episode, go back and check out my past episodes of Album Rankings. The playlist is in the description box. And now, on with the video. We start off at number 9 with their most recent record, Can't Slow Down. Released on September 29th, 2009. This was the first album since 1994's Mr. Moonlight. And it features... Former Hurricane lead singer Kelly Hansen on lead vocals and Dawkins' Jeff Pilson on bass. Marty Fredrickson and guitarist Mick Jones' stepson Mark Ronson co-produced the record. The band started their farewell tour in 2023 and they said that this album would be their final one. The album reached number 29 on the Billboard 200 with the first two singles. When it came, comes to love and in pieces, both reach the top 20 on the adult contemporary charts. In 2010, it was awarded a gold certification from the Independent Music Companies Association, which indicated sales up to at least 100,000 copies throughout Europe. Most of the songs were written by Mick Jones, Kelly Hansen, and Marty Fredrickson. Next, at number 8, is Mr. Moonlight, released on October 24th, 1994 in the European markets and in Japan on November 23rd, 1994, as well as in early 1995 in the U.S. and Canada on the Rhythm Safari label. It was recorded at seven different studios across the States. The album was produced by Mick Jones, Lou Graham, who, who sings his final Foreigner album on its record, and Mike Stone, with additional production by Phil and Joe Niccolo. This was intended to be their comeback album, but it was a commercial disappointment, picking at number 136 on the Billboard 200 charts, and ranked as Foreigner's worst studio album, even though I do like the song until the end of time. Next. At number 7 is Unusual Heat, released on June 14, 1991. This was the only studio on the feature singer Johnny Edwards after Lou Graham had left the band in 1990. The album made it to number 117 on the Billboard 200, failed to go platinum or gold. Even though I like the songs Low Down and Dirty, Only Heaven Knows, and I'll Fight For You, the album was produced by Terry Thomas and Mick Jones. They were not the same foreigner without Lou Graham, I can tell you that right now. No disrespect to Johnny Edwards at all. Next. At number 6 is 1987's Inside Information. Released in December 7th, 1987, the album debuted at number 15 on the Billboard 200 albums charts and was certified platinum in the U.S. Although a huge standard by any country's charting method, the band's sales were certainly plummeting since the release of Foreigner 4 in 1981. It was the last Foreigner album to feature the 80s core lineup with Lou Graham, Mick Jones, Rick Wells, and Dennis Elliott. 
The songs that really stood out were Say You Will, Heart Turns to Stone, and I Don't Want to Live Without You. Most of the songs were written by Mick Jones and Luke Graham themselves. And to be honest, this was the last great Foreigner album before their steady decline. Next. At number five is Foreigner's self-titled debut, released on March 8th, 1977. It spun off three hit singles, Feels Like the First Time, Cold as Ice, and Long, Long Way From Home. It also features album tracks such as Head Knocker and Star Rider, the latter of which features a rare lead vocal performance from guitarist and co-founder Mick Jones. Since its release, the album went to number four on the Billboard 200 and has gone five times platinum. The album was produced by John Sinclair and Gary Lyons in collaboration with Mick Jones and Ian McDonald. As good as this album is, their next batch of albums will be great. As you will see. Next. Number four is Head Games, released on September 11th, 1979. This was produced by Roy Thomas Baker, who is best known for working on Queen's classic albums, and a marked appearance of their new bassist, Rick Wills, who replaced Ed Gagliardi, who was fired from the group. This was also the last Foreigner album to feature Ian McDonald and Al Greenwood, who would leave the band after recording it. Head Games is the last Foreigner album to feature a lead vocal by guitarist Mick Jones on the song The Modern Day. The album sparked hit singles such as Women, the title track Head Games, and Dirty White Boy, as long as also Love on a Telephone it was also a hit in the UK, I think, but it was not listed. Since its release, Head Games went to number five and went five times platinum. Next. Coming in at number three is Double Vision, released on June 20th, 1978. Double Vision was the first in the line of many other recordings in which A&R executive John Callender would simply have his name listed twice in linear notes. The album was produced by Keith Olsen along with Mick Jones and Ian McDonald. While the song had some pretty good hits like the title track Double Vision, Hot Blooded, Blue Morning and Blue Day, the album made it to number 3 on the Billboard 200 and went 7 times platinum. This would be the last album to feature Ed Gagliardi on bass guitar before he was replaced by Rick Wills for Head Games. Next. At number 2 is Foreigner 4, released on July 3rd, 1981. Produced by legendary producer Robert John Mutt Lang, who had worked with bands like ACDC and Def Leppard before that and also Mick Jones. The album was a worldwide success, holding the number one position on the Billboard album charts for a total of 10 weeks, and went six times platinum. Thanks to the standout hit singles, Urgent, Waiting for a Girl Like You, and Jukebox Hero, along with other songs like Break It Up, Luann, Girl on the Moon, and Don't Let Go. This is by far one of Foreigner's most successful studio records to date. Even though Double Vision sold... 7 million albums, Born of Four Only Sold 6, and it was their first and only number one album on the Billboard 200. Next. And this is my favorite Foreigner album. Number one, it's Agent Provocator. Released on December 14th, 1984, the album reached the top five in the U.S., although album sales were lower than their previous work. It contains the band's biggest hit single to date, which was the album's love theme, I Want to Know What Love Is, which is their only UK number one single, which is also their only number one single in the US as well, staying at the top spot for two or three weeks respectively. They had other standout hits like That Was Yesterday, Down on Love, Reaction to Action. To me, Agent Provocator was like their magnum opus, following the success of Four. Even though they didn't sell as much as Four did. But it, nonetheless, it was still a triple platinum album nonetheless. Here's a quick recap of the Foreigner albums I ranked. 
Now, keep in mind, they were recently selected for induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I always believed that Lou Graham was the heart and soul of the, le the group as lead singer, taking nothing away from Kelly Hansen, who had been with the band since 2005 as their lead singer. And this is going to sound crazy, but Jeff Pilson did his best to hold the band together during that long period of time. He had been with uh, Foreigner for 20 years by this point. After he had a fallen out with Doc and anyways, I always thought that their last album can't slow down. Even though it was more successful than Mr. Moonlight, it failed to achieve golden platinum status. Mr. Moonlight was the last album to feature Lou Graham on lead vocals. Unusual Heat had Johnny Edwards on lead vocals for the first time. Inside Information was the last platinum record they ever had. The, the debut and Head Games and Double Vision were all good albums. Four and a Four turned out to be the most successful. And of course, Agent Provocator is actually my all-time favorite Four and a record. Thanks to the song, I Want to Know What Love Is. This has been Joel Lum's album rankings for this Sunday. I expect every single new episode every Sunday. No, no.